guys, it's Tori, and I'm actually going to start doing a monthly TBR. As you can tell from the title, I have decided to create a Bookopoly board for myself. If you haven't seen these before, I know of a couple YouTubers who have done it. I will link Becca's, I forgot her channel name, but I li will link her video down below for her more recent, I think it's her second board tour, just because that's the video I really looked at for inspiration and help in doing this so thank you to her for inspiring me to do this but I realized recently that I actually am more motivated to get through books that I otherwise would not usually choose when I have challenges to fulfill so for like readathons and stuff I really enjoy making TBRs for those I really enjoy making it through books that again I normally wouldn't read that being said, I am sometimes a mood reader. I'm like not always a mood reader. I'm able to branch out a little bit once I start a book if it's good enough. I'll usually just be drawn into it no matter what it is. But every once in a while I'll be like, I'm really just in the mood for this book. And so that may create speed bumps for me along the way. But I really think this will be great for me to get through my TBR. So here is kind of a brief look at the board. Um, I will give a quick tour of this and then I'll do my February TBR. Full disclosure though, I am filming this at the beginning of January before I go back to school after Christmas break just because I wanted to make sure I had books that would fit these prompts for fe February with me when I went down to school. So I had to do it early. Yeah, that's just how it's going to go. I'm sure for March I'll be able to go home for a weekend or something either in February or towards the beginning of March to enable me to switch out for the prompts I get for my March. But for February I know I'm not going to come back home in January because I was just home. So yes, that is all of that. And let's just get into the tour of the board. Okay, so quick tour before I actually do my monthly thing. So first of all, we have Go, obviously, which is a free space, as you can see down here. Um, so this is basically, I can pick any book that I want to. Next, we have the brown color, which is based on th mystery. Um, so the first one is a subgenre of thriller, and then the second brown one is just any mystery I would want. In between, we have a community shelf piece, which would be a, as you can see over there, a card. The cards are more specific, so chance would be about what the book looks like, so what's on the cover, what's in the title, what author it's by, and community shelf will be what's in the book, so synopsis-wise. There's also a couple that are based on page count in there. Then we have parent recommendations. My parents Parents have recommended a lot of books to me over the years and so this will allow me to actually read those recommendations because I tend to think more along the lines of booktube recommendations, books that I'm just interested in on my own so I don't always think about the ones my parents have recommended me but now I'll have an excuse to hopefully pick more up. Next we have a square where the train stations would usually be and for these I just did buzzwords. So this one is non-western, not literally meaning the cowboy western, although my sister just really wanted to draw that. But this is meaning any book that's not based on western culture. So this would be Asian inspired stories, uh, African, even South American. So this can be like contemporaries about characters from those areas or it can be fantasy or other based on like mythology from those areas, whatever it is. That's what though that one will stand for. Next we have the purples, which are, as you can see, just the age ranges. Um, so it's not a specific genre, but we have middle grade, young adults, and adults. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. And then in between that we have a chance card, which as I explained earlier would mean picking one of those. And then on the end here, let me move this so you can see it better, we have the just visiting square and since it's just visiting I decided it would be appropriate to do a novella or short story collection if I land on there as a just visiting for an author for example. So that's what that will be. Next we have the pinks which are based primarily around contemporary, although I don't read a ton of contemporary, so I bent this area a little bit, especially with this first one, which is romance heavy, so that does not necessarily mean it has to be a contemporary. It can be any book 
in any genre that is romance heavy. The next pink one is contemporary, so just a general, any contemporary I want. And then we have literary fiction right here. And then in between we have one that says writing craft. So I don't read a lot of nonfiction books, but the one of the genres I'd like to read more of within nonfiction is writing craft, just because I really want to be more inspired to write and get a little bit more skill in that area. So I put the square on here to hopefully get me to read at least one this year. Next we have another train station piece which would be a buzzword and so this is fairy tale and mythology. So basically any retelling, any book inspired by a fairy tale or mythology of any kind will count for that. Next we have for the oranges are all fantasy, types of fantasy. These are actually my favorite squares on the board. My sister designed these ones. She designed most of them to be honest because I was really slow on the ones I was doing so she just went for it. But anyway, so these are separated into different types. So we have high fantasy. If you don't know, high fantasy is any book that takes place in its own magical world. Then we have low fantasy over here which is books that take place in our world but have magic. And then historical fantasy. This usually has to do with witches to be quite honest but it's any book that's like a historical fiction but has magic. So similar to low fantasy but a little bit different and more specific. On the square that would usually be free parking I put reread so any reread at all. Um, obviously I can reread a book for any of the squares um, as long as it follows the prompt but this is specifically for a reread. So this whole side of the board is dedicated to classics reading as I really would like to read a lot more classics this year. So first right here we have time periods. So we have Victorian and this is anything written during that time period no matter what country it's from. I just use it as a time marker as a lot of the books I read tend to be within that time period even if they're not all British. And then we have pre-Victorian and post-Victorian as the the other general time period. Obviously we have a chant, another chance right there. For this train station side we have ostracized meaning any book that discusses a character who is ostracized whether that be because of race or because of like a fallen woman or being born out of wedlock or anything like that would go there. Obviously most of those are going to be classics for me but there are definitely modern written books that deal with that topic. The yellows are all types of classics, sort of subgenres within classics. So we have classic drama. What I mean by this is basically contemporary type stories, but that were written within a certain time period, if that makes sense. So anything pretty much by Elizabeth Gaskell, a lot of Charles Dickens stuff, Jane Austen, anything that's like, like would be considered contemporary, but it was just written a hundred years ago or whatever. Gothic slash sensation novels are right here. These two are the most common classics that I read. However, there are other classics that I can read and so that's what this one is for. Other classics meaning science fiction, fantasy, even historical fiction f classics or plays, for example, would count for this. And in between that we have your choice of audiobook. Similar with the reread, any of these obviously can be listened to as an audiobook instead of physically read, but this allows me to have a pick for what audiobook I would like to listen to. And then we have the go to jail square, which I put as oldest book on the TBR, so I wanted it to be a little bit of a trickier, less inspiring square. So obviously the oldest book on your TBR is one you're, you're probably not as interested in at the moment, because it's been on there so long but you're still interested enough to keep it so about time to read it kind of a thing so that's what that one is and the last side first of all we have the greens which are all history based so we have historical fiction your choice so any choice of historical fiction I would want to read. Next we have popular historical fiction so this can be anything that I see a lot on booktube or even a lot on goodreads or other lists that is referenced a lot. And then this last green one is historical nonfiction. Again, I don't read a lot of nonfiction, but most of what I read when I do read nonfiction is historical. So 
that's that. Then we have another community shelf. My last train station is, the word is grief, so any book dealing with grief in any way. We then have another chance card, and then we have the two blues. These are based around science fiction, which is another genre I don't read a ton of, which is why I kind of put it on here, because these ones aren't landed on quite as much, usually, so I put them over here. But we have dystopian, specifically, which I haven't read a lot of dystopian recently, but I am sure I can find some that I would be interested in, and then general science fiction, any kind of science fiction that I may want to read, and then the last square in between that is most re recent purchase, so obviously the opposite of the oldest on the TBR, whatever was the most recent book I received or bought, really, but most recent purchase just is what I ended up writing. So there's that. So that is my Bookopoly board. And now let's get into my February TBR. For each month, I'm planning to go around once. I originally was thinking about only doing four rules, but then I realized that um, I would almost never get to that side, to the blue-green side. So... We're going to do once around, hopefully I won't get too many books, especially because it's February, the shortest month of the year, and I'm in school, but we'll see. I'm sure I can get things figured out no matter what. I decided to use this cute squishy hippo as my place marker, just because he's cute and I had him, and he is a good size for this. So, let's just get into this. I don't have physical dice, so I'm going to be using um, some on my computer, which is off screen, so you won't be able to see it but I promise I won't lie about what number I get. So anyway, let's just get started with this. Okay, so I got six. One, two, three, four, five, six, middle grade. I thankfully have several different options for this, plus middle grade are quick to read, so even if I end up getting a lot of books, this will be a hopefully fast read no matter what I pick. Okay, so I have a lot of middle grade I need to read. I just haven't really been in the mood for middle grade grade recently so I haven't read very much but there is one well there are several I can read but there is one in particular that has caught my attention and I just really need to pick it up because it's a continuation of a childhood favorite of mine and that is Dragon Watch by Brandon Mole. I don't know if you ever read Fable Haven by Brandon Mole but this is a continuation of that series. Basically that series follows Kendra and Seth who in the first book their parents are going on a vacation and so they are taking to their grandparents home. Their grandparents are a little hermity. They don't really get out very much. They haven't really seen these grandparents very often. They know their other grandparents a lot better but these are the grandparents they have to stay with and they discovered that their grandparents are actually keepers of a magical sanctuary and so the series kind of goes on from there so this is a continuation series that just recently in the past couple years has started coming out following the same brother and sister duo as they deal with some repercussions from the original series while a lot of the time i worry about continuations like this years after i really trust brandon mole to do okay i know my mom has read the couple that have come out already and has really enjoyed them so i'm excited to read this next we have 10 so one two three four six seven eight nine ten which is on high fantasy so that's fun for a high fantasy i had several to choose from all of which were honestly kind of long but i did end up going with the lost queen by signa pite this is a sort of a king arthur retelling i'm not completely sure but basically it follows this girl who i don't know if she starts off being a queen or if she marries and becomes a queen i don't know but she's the twin sister of the man who would go on to inspire the character of Merlin. I don't know much more than that. I don't really need to know much more than that. I'm excited to pick this up. It looks really good. I had a friend who read it who said it starts off kind of slow but it ended up being pretty good and she enjoyed it so hopefully I'll enjoy it as well. Next I got seven so we'll go one two three four five six seven. So that is a Victorian classic which is awesome. As I said in the tour the Victorian space is for any books written during that time period not just those written in the UK. So um, I ended up going with a shorter one since I do have a longer one on here already and I know myself and I know that I'll want some shorter books along with that with how short the month is and school and stuff. So 
I went with The Turn of the Screw and Daisy Miller by Henry James. These are two novellas combined into one. And I know that The Turn of the Screw at least is gothic in nature. I think Daisy Miller is less so. But I've been really wanting to pick this up for so long. I just keep having it on my radar and I just never get to it. So I'm finally going to get to it. And I'm really excited about that. Next we have 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Historical nonfiction. I think I know exactly what I'm going to end up reading for that. For a historical nonfiction, I am working on a project to read or listen to on audiobook at least one book about each of the six wives of Henry VIII. I have recently discovered Six the Musical. Well, it's been a couple months since I did, but I've really, really loved it. And so I've been interested in learning more about each of them individually. And so I am currently working on Catherine of Aragon's book, but by the time February comes around, I'll either be in Anne Boleyn's book or Jane Seymour's. It depends on how this month goes. But the Anne Boleyn nonfiction book that I'm going to be listening to is The Creation of Anne Boleyn, A New Look at England's Most Notorious Queen by Susan Bordeaux. I am really excited to listen to this. Anne Boleyn is one that I think everybody is very interested in. And so I'm curious to see what this is like. The other book for Jane Seymour is Jane Seymour, Henry VIII's Most Lo Beloved Queen, Loved Queen. Henry Henry VIII's True Love, that's what it is, by Elizabeth Norton. This is obviously a book about Jane Seymour, so whichever one of these I'm on by the time February comes around will be the one that counts for this prompt. All right, and we have six again, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a free space. So I can read whatever I want for that one. I'm going to go with a book that I'm going to be buddy reading with my roommates. And although we'll start in January, we probably won't finish until February. And that is Emma by Jane Austen. We are reading this before the movie comes out. So I'm just going to count this as my choice since I know, already know I'm going to be reading it in February. And it will help me feel a little more calm about how much I have to read in February. Although honestly, looking at this pile I don't have that much so we'll see there's a huge chance I'm going to read more than just what's on my TBR for this but we'll see anyway so that is it for my bookopoly TBR for February thanks so much for watching let me know down below some books you're excited to read in February as I would love to know and I will talk to you next time bye